Welcome to Last Epoch Explained, and in this episode, we're going to be going over survivability and tankiness. Now, there is a multitude of ways. There is a plethora of methods in order to sustain and outright mitigate damage that your character is going to inevitably take. Some systems you may have seen before, some are new and novelties, and some probably look the same but act a little bit differently. But I promise it's all in a way that makes a ton of sense. So let's jump into it. So here we have my level 87 marksman and you can see I only have 2,500 health and I have 50% endurance and 47% ward retention. And you can tell that my resistances are generally maxed out. Resistances in Last Epoch work a little bit differently. As stated in the description, enemies penetrate 1% of your resistance per area level. And you can check your area level in the top right corner here if you have the mini map overlay in the center of the screen. This area level's 87. While you're in the late game, this doesn't matter so much because it goes up to 75%. While you're leveling, however, this is going to greatly affect you now. There are some nuances to how much resistance you want to get. Generally, maxing out your resistances isn't that big of a deal in Last Epoch. Now, it's a long-winded explanation why. However, if you just focus on getting as much health as possible and as much armor, dodge, ward and ward retention and other forms of damage reduction and other forms of debuffing enemies that's going to net you a greater overall tankiness than if you were to go full in and use a ton of your equipment affixes on different resistances and you'll notice that a lot of the time what you really want is just health and hybrid health and you want health and more health and you want health and then you want more health and then you want health and then you want more health and you want vitality which also gives you more health let's talk about ward retention ward is a barrier mechanic in the game of last epoch it's akin to energy shield and path of exile now ward acts differently in last epoch there is a decay rate your baseline is zero ward your baseline ward retention is also zero percent there is a long-winded explanation to talk about min maxing ward retention versus ward regeneration and ward generation in general however the more you get the better it is there's no cap to the amount of ward that you can have so on some sorcerer builds you can get upwards of 10 to 20 thousand ward and you can get it consistently the same damage reduction applies to ward as health because damage is taken from ward before health now ward retention is increased naturally by intelligence and most builds that utilize intelligence also utilize ward and so it's very synergistic in that fashion now let's talk about endurance now endurance oh my good endurance is a low life damage reduction mechanic your baseline endurance is 20 percent damage reduction and this is multiplicative with all other sources of damage reduction it's just as good as it seems your endurance threshold your base endurance threshold is a percentage of your max health and that will never go below a certain amount depending on how much health you have in this case i don't have any endurance threshold anywhere else on my build and i have 550 endurance threshold while having a little over 2500 health all damage dealt to that endurance threshold is mitigated by 50 percent so in actuality i need to take 1100 damage in order to die once I hit that endurance threshold. Now you may be wondering, what if an instance of damage is applied outside of the endurance threshold and dips into the endurance threshold? Well, it works in your favor. The damage reduction applied by endurance applies to any damage that would be taken outside of or inside of the endurance threshold if it goes into the endurance threshold. That means if I'm at 700 health and I take 700 damage, I won't die because the endurance is mitigating a good portion of that damage. Now let's talk about armor. Armor mitigates all damage except damage over time. Armor is only 70% as effective against non-physical damage as opposed to physical damage. And what's interesting in this epoch is that there is a physical resistance stat. And that is different and separate but works in conjunction with armor. So for some characters and classes that utilize armor and they also get a good bit of physical resistance, they're essentially immune to physical damage. Or those characters that do focus on armor can forego physical resistance and instead focus more on armor because it mitigates all damage you take, except for damage over time, of course. Let's talk about dodge. So if you have about 10 times more dodge than the area level, you're going to have around 50% dodge chance. Dodge is a chance to fully ignore 
damage from hits. And so this can be used to great effect, and there are sources of guaranteed dodges in the game. My build, for instance, utilizes Silver Shrouds, which is a type of buff that guarantees that I dodge the next hit. And I also gain ward once I do dodge that hit. Now remember, this is a dexterity based class and I am utilizing ward, which means I, I want a little bit of ward retention, which is why I wanted to utilize ivory rings because they give you a large chunk of ward retention as well as resistance as their inherent affixes. Because those two attributes are generally difficult to get for the rogue class. And so if I get them somewhere else in large chunks like this, it's very efficient. Now dexterity, increases your dodge rating by a flat amount of four and there are a lot of instances of increasing your dodge rating by a percentage as well as a flat amount there is a cap of dodge at 85 percent chance now let's talk about block block is just like you think in any game you block damage however in last epoch you block a portion of that damage based off of your block effectiveness now you can have a chance to block without using a shield However, that's a little bit advanced. We'll just talk about blocking with a shield. All shields come with an innate block chance and an innate block effectiveness. And oftentimes they have other innate attributes as well that are extremely efficient and useful. And there are many different types of unique shields in the game. Now we need to talk about sustaining your character. Your health potion scales alongside your character level. So you never need to worry about that. You get more health potion slots by having better belts. There are some builds that utilize potion usage in order to become more tanky, and those same builds can also drop a lot of potions on the ground so that you can constantly keep those buffs up. Now sustaining your base health pool, there are many different ways you can do so. However, the main few are going to be life leech, health regeneration, health potions, and healing from various healing skills and passives. There are a lot of different ways to scale health regeneration, but generally that's not gonna be your greatest source of sustain. There are many instances of flat health gain in Last Epoch, and there are also many instances of Life Leech. Now, Life Leech does have a maximum rate at which it can apply to your health, and that's based off of your health pool. However, there are some instances of attributes you can get called leech rate and you can increase that maximum rate that life leech can apply to your health pool in this case rogue has a rogue specific relic that increases poison resistance and leech rate now leech rate is a rare attribute it's not often seen on many types of items. And knowing this, you can understand just how powerful this relic is. I take about half as much poison damage and I increase my sustain by generally around 40%. And that's just with this one relic. If you simply focus on maxing out your resistances and adding a lot of health to your character, by around level 75, that ends up not being enough to get you through the game without dying. And trust me, I've played this game enough to know you will be dying a lot more than you want to. And if you want to play hardcore, you're going to have to invest in things like glancing blows. You're going to have to invest in things like frailty, ward regen and ward gain and ward retention. You're going to have to invest in at least one or maybe even two other sources of damage mitigation or self-sustain in order to get past around level 75. Up until then though, pretty straightforward, get health, get resistances and a little bit of armor wherever you can find it. And that's all you really need to get through the base game, but definitely seek out and keep in mind alternative forms of damage mitigation and reduction and sustain as you endeavor to take on the end game. Now those are generally the most important concepts and ideas when it comes to surviving in the world of Last Epoch. The game introduces you to all these different mechanics step by step in very manageable chunks, in bite-sized portions. So as far as damage conversions and crit strike avoidance and other things of that more complicated nature, the game will guide you along without holding your hand in a way that just makes sense and feels comfortable. And that's this episode of Last Epoch Explained. There should be a couple of videos popping up now that might be relevant to you and your journey in Last Epoch. I hope to see you in the next one.